And finally tonight here on The Ed Show, there's an old saying, when you don't have any ideas, you don't have anything to talk about. Here's who did not attend the very first Republican debate of the 2012 campaign season. Palin wasn't there, and neither was Bachman. Can you believe that Bachman turned away to camera time? I can't believe it. Trump, Romney, Mitch Daniels, Huntsman, Gingrich, and the huckster, Huckabee. None of them were there tonight. Pretty lengthy list, if you ask me. Come on, I thought you wanted to be president. Get into the debate. This is what it's all about. The debate hosted by their friends at Fox News and, of course, the South Carolina Republican Party. It just wrapped up a few minutes ago. Five guys did show up and say some stuff, but the most interesting part of the snooze fest was when the conversation turned to the people who weren't there. I supported him. I'm running now rather than supporting uh, Mr. Romney because he did not win. So I'm going to try my time. <laughs> Congressman Paul, a lot of folks consider you the founding father of the Tea Party movement. Now Congresswoman Michelle Bachman has founded and heads up the Tea Party caucus in the House. Has she eclipsed you? Well, she's not here tonight, so she hasn't quite done that. <laughs> And the Division Three fireworks didn't stop there. Three of the five candidates, this is good to know, they're running on a torture platform. Raise your hand if you would support a resumption of waterboarding under any circumstances. Under certain circumstances any, or any yes, circumstances? Under certain circumstances. Certain or any? Under any certain. circumstances that you could imagine, not all. Sure, I do. Okay. Leave it up to Polenti to wordsmith it. Joining me now is Eric Bollert, Senior Fellow Media Matters. Uh, great to have you with us tonight. The online chatter, of course, out there is that Herman Cain won the debate tonight. Uh, he's coming out of nowhere, very flamboyant. He'll say stuff. Right. He knows he has nothing to lose. Right, right. What do you make of Romney and the rest of the crowd not being in there? Why the calculation of not them not to be there tonight? Well, I think I think it's an embarrassment for Fox News. I mean, you know, this is the Fox News primary. The, se the pro Fox News primary season has begun. We always knew this is going to be a unique campaign because there's going to be a Fox News candidate. They are no longer sort of observers the way these networks were in the past. They are an active participant. This was their first bell that they rang, and, and as you pointed out, half the people didn't show up. So that's sort of an embarrassment uh, for them. And who knows? I mean, the politics is, you know, it's already a late season. Nobody, a lot of the players aren't still in. What's it? Here's the gap. If you listen to Rush Limbaugh, if you watch Fox News, if you're on the right-wing Internet, Obama is a monster. He's a socialist. He's destroying this country. But then they have debate, and they can't find enough people that want to run against Obama. There's, there seems to be a gap there. Uh, Gingrich and Santorum have yeah. had their contracts terminated right. by Fox News. Uh, they, I guess they were on suspension for a while, but now it's a done deal. They're right. out the door. What's that mean? It doesn't mean much, as Media Matters has found. Between the time they were suspended and now, they got just as, almost as much screen time as before. So this seems to be sort of um, a little charade that Fox News might be doing. Now, if Santorum and Gingrich in the coming months are basically not on Fox News at all, except for debates, we'll see. That's a clear change. But right now, it's, it seems sort of a word game. And they have to decide about Huckabee. It was an interesting question tonight. Ron Paul got asked about heroin. Yes. Are, are these the type of questions that you got to answer correctly to win the GOP nomination? I, I guess. <laughs> I mean, he has a unique position. He sort of, you know, dances with this legalization, so he's going to get some of the stranger uh, questions. Uh, Tim Pawlenty, I, I, I think you could look at this debate tonight as an opportunity for someone who doesn't have very good name recognition right. to take advantage of the opportunity. For some of these candidates, they just couldn't pass it up. Yeah, I think so. And But if the reports are true that Herman Cain sort of beat Pawlenty and he's sort of up against what people are describing as the B and C team, that probably doesn't bode well, all that well for Candidates him. got asked about bin Laden's death photo uh, and a lot more hand ringing here. Here it is. If you could raise your hand, if as president you would put out a photo of a dead Osama bin Laden. Just to be sure, Mr. Cain, you would not. I would not. What do you make of that? Well, it's interesting. I mean, this is part of the debate. Uh, the, the Republican Party and the conservative movement seems to be split. I mean, there are definitely Republican members of Congress that agree with the White House, which is pretty rare in these days that they agree on anything. So it doesn't seem to be a slam dunk case, uh, except in the extreme right wing. Eric, when do these candidates have to show up? When do they have to get in? 
Well, I would think by June, I would, you know, uh, NBC and Politico moved their debate back, I think. Uh, the next big event they have to be in, uh, and again, this is sort of embarrassing. Fox News is the player in the conservative movement. They put out the call, and they couldn't even, form, they couldn't even you know, get a full lineup. Who's Fox backing right now through well, giving, giving, giving the analysis of media matters when you, you dissect their right, word right. smithing? Who are they really behind? Well, Six or eight months ago, it was clearly Sarah Palin. Two months ago, six weeks ago, it was Donald Trump. They're, the candidates that they get behind seem to be flaming out. I don't know if I was running for the White House if I'd want to be the next Fox News candidate. Well, based on the answers tonight from what I saw uh, and from what I've heard in my earpiece, uh, Donald Trump would have done pretty well. <laughs> he would have made headlines. He's much, he's much, he's better with the quips. Yeah, that sort of thing. This was a very wordy night. No yeah, one's going to remember but, this debate in three hours. But, from but now. of course, I endorsed him, so I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I would say that, that Trump did the best job. I'd love to see him get it. Eric Bollert, Media Matters, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much.